Wayne Helms. I'm the regional manager for the Premier Oilfield Laboratories in Midland, Texas. I came to Midland in 1968. My parents moved here when I was in junior high school. I've lived in Midland for the great majority of that time since 1968. When we first moved here, Midland was around 44,000 people. We had started a mini oil boom back then in conventional San Andres. I got my first job in corn analysis because of that boom. We were doing San Andres wells all the way from the majors, which were prim the primary customers at that time, Gulf, Amoco, Shell. That was the companies. If we didn't work for the large majors at that time, we would have done no work at all. And that's probably one of the largest differences in our business as a whole is over the last 40 years plus, we've seen a definite shift from primarily majors to small to medium-sized independents with minimal influence in the Permian Basin by major oil companies. This boom has been, I guess, more technology driven and there's probably a lot more jobs in production, but when prices have dropped this time, there's been no outpouring of people moving to other locations, getting away from here. People have stayed and the jobs have still stayed here and the cities continue to grow. The Premier Sample Library is a repository for drill cuttings from wells going back from the 1940s until the present day. And it's the only one of its type that's a public repository. So all these boxes are cutting samples from wells that have been drilled, uh, some more recently, some are older, from a whole host of different operators in the Permian Basin. And each box has, you know, 60 to 100 samples of actual rock material from the formations that these operators are drilling. And we can use this material to uh, tell us more about the actual geology in the basin. Some of the samples from the older wells are in, you know, differing shapes. Most of them are actually incredibly well preserved from being, you know, 70 years old at this point. We're not just cataloging all these samples. We're, you know, accepting donations, taking these materials, and actually generating data on them, useful data that, you know, operators can apply to their own workflows for exploration, for correlating different units throughout the basin, for refining their geologic and petrophysical models within a certain region, or tracing a particular bed or set of beds from one side of the basin to another side of the basin. Yeah, when I first uh, started into the business, uh, we'd go down the library. They had an index card set of every well that was in the library. When Premier took this over, they're having, providing a digital database so we know what we have there and what's accessible. And now it's gonna provide much more value to operators here in the basin. This data can be used from anything from frontier exploration in terms of trying to better understand what's the quality of the rock in this area that I've never even gone into to field development of areas where there's already a lot of information and data available in that area, but our data kind of takes that data to the next level. So everything from exploration to development, we even have workflows where we uh, provide uh, optimized completion strategies. So even going all the way to completing a well and producing from it you can use this data. When it comes to um, resources like um, sidewall cores or cutting specifically, you know, when we access an old field, when we take over an old field that maybe was a legacy field from the 40s or 50s, those cuttings are something that we don't have access to because we weren't the original company that drilled the wells. But if they're on a sample library that we can go get, we can analyze and we can learn, quite frankly, that lost bit of information that you know the original company, the original Exxons or Mobiles knew that information, but those files have been long destroyed. With all the new technology that we have today, it's exciting to see what new data we can pull out of stuff that, quite frankly, has been kind of, I don't want to say forgotten, but it's kind of been warehoused and everybody says, ah, oh, it's just old, old data, old cuttings, old rocks, you know, it's just, we can't learn anything from it, but this new technology that we're doing, and it's just come alive. I've been associated with these buildings for probably, I'm going to have to say, 24 years. When I was over across the street with the Midland Oil Scouts, uh, I remember the semi-trucks that would come up and down the alleys, dropping off samples for us to cut. Most companies mudlog their wells and collect samples. It's the one time that you can get that actual rock data from a well you drill. If you don't capture 
those samples then, then you know you never have that data. So fortunately, the companies I've worked for through my career, Texaco, Chevron, Fasken Oil & Ranch, we mud log every well we drill. So we have a set of cuttings for every well. We stored those cuttings at the International Sample Library, do paleontology or geochemical analysis on those cuttings. One of the things that we're doing is we're building basin-wide studies, utilizing and leveraging the materials we have here. And the core of those studies are inorganic and organic geochemistry. We're collecting XRF data, that's elemental data, tells you about the composition, elemental composition of the rocks. XRD, which is X-ray diffraction, uh, that's mineralogical data. TOC, total organic carbon, and pyrolysis, which tells you about the source rock maturity and the different shale plays in the area. A lot of times I think as geoscientists, we just, we see the data, we see the end result of the analysis. The actual materials themselves are equally as important. You know, we need to make sure that these, that these cuttings are truly representative of the formations that, you know, they're being taken from. We want to take these samples and bring that system into the 21st century as well, so that you can have access to this data on a, you know, a common platform. You can actually use this material with these new analyses. We can evolve beyond just having rock material sitting in a warehouse. Premier has developed an online platform to provide access to this data that we're generating and access to photos of the material, any information you want on the material stored at the sample library. Talking about the cuttings library, went back and pulled some logs from four different wells um, and looking at the unconventional part um, and actually did this chemostratigraphy that we talk about in those four different samples and used it in the wolf camp to define if there was a valuable resource in an untapped zone over in New Mexico. We had four wells that were all across the basin that one was in western Eddy County and all the way through Lee County. And we were able to analyze through these cuttings if there was an organic, rich, unconventional reservoir that was untapped. And we were able to look at these four wells and determine two of them looked great, one of them looked marginal, and one of them looked pretty poor. Just the open hole log data that we had, they looked fairly similar. So this really kind of put us into a different ball game where we could say these are better rocks, these are poorer rocks, let's, let's concentrate here. From my perspective as a, as a geologist and a geoscientist, this is the actual rock data. This is the material from the formations at depth. These aren't indirect measurements, these are direct measurements. You get to actually see the rock itself. You can see the different facies in the core. You can try to pick out some of that information from the cuttings. It's all a puzzle. Geology is a big puzzle. And these are the pieces that you can use to put that puzzle together. I think one thing that makes us unique is that our company comes at the, the, the problem from a multi-domain approach, whether it be core analysis, reservoir fluid analysis, um, looking at uh, the stratigraphic deposition. Um, we have those types of experts all in-house here. When we come and approach a project, we try to understand it from the different domains so that we can then apply each individual's expertise towards that problem. Our very first start was to go in and look at the whole core and try to characterize it on a very high resolution, a two-inch resolution, to allow us to capture all of these different laminations. And we can ask them the questions about the eternal triangle of are they looking you know, for quality, are they looking for you know, something fast, or are they looking for something cheap? By understanding you know, where they're coming from, um, we can propose testing that, that meets those criteria but still gives them enough data so that they'll be able to drill and complete their wells and, and get the best production. With our XRF, we've been able to find specific elements that help to track the total organic content within the reservoir, uh, making it easier and cheaper to locate the sweet spot um, than it would be to do an actual TOC test. The second thing which we've learned on a recent project is by looking at that spectite content and then relating that back to the reservoir rock strength, we can kind of indicate if the rock is gonna frack well. When we frack, we're breaking the rock, but we've got to put something in there to keep that rock propped open, and that's the sand, that's the propping. The amount of propping that you put into the well obviously will impact how wide that frack is, and so how conductive of a highway it is from the reservoir back to the wellbore. 
if you drill a well and you go in and then you do a core description to understand the depositional environment, you can then see the changes in the layering and tie that back to the seismic data. And all of these reservoirs are so different that just because you think you have an understanding of how these um, interpretive results might work in one play, it's not always going to be the same. And so the rock is the end truth of what you need to tie everything back to. We realize that within the industry, it's, it's often difficult to fully characterize the subsurface with just one piece of data. Not one piece of data is going to answer all of the questions that we have. And as a geologist or as an engineer, you realize that. And so what we're really trying to offer here is this multi-domain approach where we offer uh, anything from core and cuttings data all the way to the well logs or any other types of data uh, that, that geologists and engineers typically use. This is one of these solutions that we offer. We have a platform that allows you to quickly see where we've collected data, where it resides, and we want to maintain that because we realize this is one of the finite resources that people utilize to answer specific questions. And so if they're easily uh, able to go onto a map and see exactly where we have data and, and, and where we've generated things, they can easily go there and access it and see how it helps them improve their efficiency. In this large hole in the ground on the left, it used to be known as Wild River Canyon. It was a water park in the 1980s that failed. Now it is currently going to be a drilling location for a horizontal well right in the front yard of our office. Hopefully we'll get the core on that well and we can just walk it into the office.